to believe that you are keeping to all the laid down rules. Okay, today I know we've had, you know, a lot of times on our, time on our hands. We taught school, we'll be resuming anytime soon, but voila, we're still here, still on lockdown for we who are in school. Yes, we. <laughs> we're still on lockdown, and I know a lot of things has crossed through your mind this period. You have had a lot. Your mind has been busy. Some of you have picked up hobbies you never knew you had before. For me particularly, something weird has been crossing my mind. I've been wondering if I really do have superpowers. Watching a lot of movies, I, I realized I would really love to be, you know, like Wonder Woman, maybe with a little bit of Captain America, and probably have the awesome gadgets like Batman. I wonder what that would look like. That would be so exciting. But come to think of it, do Christians really have superpowers? Do we have powers that we can use to save the day? Let's watch this clip and find out what we have to say today. Enoch walked with God for 300 years until God just took him. According to the book of Enoch, he was also transported many times, went through portals, foretold the future, and was in an angelic transport house, similar to what Elijah explained as a chariot of fire. Many people believe this to be some type of alien aircraft, you know. Um, and then he also went in and out different portals. Enoch describes portal transport clearly in the book of Enoch, chapter 14, 8 through 12. So um, I'm going to go into Abraham now. 
Okay, Abraham had um, what most of us already know of is a gift of faith. You know, through faith, Abraham believed that Yahweh would give him a son after waiting for nearly 45 years. Through faith, Abraham offered up to Yahweh his only begotten son um, of his wife, Sarah. And, you know, faith is a gift. The Bible tells us it's a, it is a gift of the, uh, of the spirit. Isaac was a man of great faith. According to the book of Joshua, Isaac at one point figured out that Abraham was going to sacrifice him. Okay. And he knew that. And he believed in God so much that he was willing to lay down his life for the fulfillment of the sacrificial offering to the Lord. He did not run or complain. Glory to God, you know. However, we know that God later told Abraham to sacrifice the lamb instead of Isaac. And Isaac was also a man of of prophecy. Isaac foresees into the future when he prophesies over his sons, Jacob and Esau. In the prophecies, he is also foretelling of the end days. And you can go and read that in Genesis 27 verses 26 through 40. Okay, so uh, Jacob, you know, Isaac's son, Jacob. Jacob was a man with a supernatural ability of prophetic dreams. He dreamed the famous story we know of as Jacob's letter, which is really a portal from earth to heaven. Throughout the ages, many have tried to locate this portal unsuccessfully. And you can read about that in Genesis 28, 12 through 16. So Joseph. You know, Joseph was a man, um, we know, um, he had great strength and stamina and he was good with a bow. And, you know, we know that from Jacob's prophecy to him in Genesis 49, you can go and read that. Um, and then also Joseph's son's ability to get a person enraged at peace. His son Manasseh, we talked about before at the supernatural strength because he was in a family But Manasseh also had an ability that very few, and I have heard it before, um, have had. I've never done a video about this, but the Lord showed me because I'm going to be on a team of people working in the end days. And one person on my team has the ability to take people that are enraged and like change their mind. Like I saw that this person was enraged and coming at us to kill us. And she commanded him some kind of way with her ability that God gave him her. And, and this guy turned around and began to go towards the enemy instead of coming at us. Okay. Joseph's son Manasseh had an ability like that. The book of Joshua tells us in chapter 54, starting at 53, Moses was made a God unto Pharaoh. The Bible tells us in Exodus seven and one, but I want to get into this staff, this rod that Moses had. Because a lot of people know he had a staff and they know of some of the miracles, but I want to really go over all of them, which is amazing that he did with the staff. Okay. Um, the, the Bible says that in Exodus four and 17, and thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith, wherewith thou shall do signs. So God told him that he would do, you know, all these signs with this rod. So, um, some of the things he did was he turned the rod into a serpent. Um, he used the rod to turn water into, to blood. He used the rod to bring on a plague of frogs. It was used to bring on a plague of lice. He also exhibited control over flies, you know, and I've heard the Lord of the flies before, but you know, the real Lord of, well, I wouldn't call him the Lord of the flies, but he did have control over flies, Moses. He also um, brought about a plague of bulls, which is like scabs all over the skin. He also used that staff to bring on a plague of hell. It was used to bring on a plague of locusts, you know, because I didn't even know Moses did that until I was doing this research. He also used that staff to divide the Red Sea, which most people are aware of that one. He also used it to get water out of a rock and he used it to win various battles. Okay. The Bible says in Exodus 17, nine through 11, and Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out 
fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand, when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. So this rod is that powerful. Can you imagine? He holds it up and they're, they're winning. He puts it down. They start losing. So they actually came over Aaron and some others and they prompted his hand up to be able to rest it so he can keep that staff lifted up in the sky. So just imagine having a staff like that. I know of one person who has had multiple dreams of God giving him a supernatural staff in the end days. And that's amazing. I haven't seen that personally, but wow. Okay. That's all I can say is wow. Welcome back. Now we've seen a lot of people in the Bible who do have what we will classify as superpowers to save the day. These powers are what we can even call our gifts, our potentials, the things that make us different and stand out. So our topic today is like a question. Am I gifted too? If I am, why? Our text will be taken from the books of Judges chapter 14, 6 and 19, Judges chapter 15, 1 to 20, and James chapter 1, verse 17. I will only read two of the scriptures. Let's open our Bible. Open up your Bible quickly to Judges chapter 14, verse 6. It says, But the Spirit took control of Samson, and with his bare hands he tore the lion apart as though it was a goat. His parents did not know. Verse 19. Then the Lord's spirit took control of Samson. He went to Ashkelon and killed 30 men and took their clothes. Okay, open your Bible to James chapter 1 verse 17. It says, Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father who created all light in the heaven. Here we see Samson, a man gifted with so much strength that the Philistines were afraid of him. They were terrified of Samson. Samson had so much power that was bestowed upon him by the Spirit of God. If you notice in our scriptures, the two verses we read, it said, but the Lord's Spirit took control. Verse 19, it says, the Lord's Spirit took control. That means the Spirit of God is what makes the difference. It's what gives the Christian his or her superpowers. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Samson was blessed with so much physical strength no one could stand him, as we saw in our text. Samson's gift began to show very early. His parents noticed this thing when he was very, very young. Some of us, our parents would have noticed something about us. Oh, by the time Semilolo was six years old, she has such a beautiful voice and sing so beautifully and sang so beautifully. Oh, he's very talented and gifted in painting. This tiny details are what make up the you that you are. Now I want you to understand this thing. These gifts that we are given are unique to us. It might seem like so many people are into the music industry, so many people have the gift to sing, but I need you to understand that yours is a unique and for a particular purpose. It is very necessary for the kingdom of God, and it is very, very important to God. Do not forget, your gifts are important to God. Just as Samson was called to deliver the Israelites from the hands of the Philistines, so also have you been called to deliver the, to deliver the people of God. So also have you been called to make a difference on earth. So also have you been chosen to be a blessing to others. God expects you to use your gifts well, to use your gifts very well, and above all, to use your gifts for his glory. Our memory verse today will be taken from the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 29. It says, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. I repeat, God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. So we will be uploading a document on the screen. 
I know you can see it now. And I'll read, need you to get a notepad and a pen. Write down the questions, answer the questions, and send it through our platforms. You know how we get in touch with each other. One of the questions is, what is all the big things you think God has in mind for you? Write them, uh, write them out clearly. Example, your profession. What do you hope to be? So answer those questions. This is a guide for people who might think, oh, I don't think I have any special gifts. I don't think God has any plan for me. Let's start with this step and see what God has in store for us and see the gifts he has given us to be able to be a blessing to our world. Dear friends, always remember you are blessed and you are gifted by God. See you same time next week. I love you. Bye.